What's up guys, I'm Shane and this is Spare Change. Here on the channel, we discuss all things audio and video, like new movies and new AV equipment. So if it's your first time here, consider tapping that subscribe button for new weekly videos. And for review, we've got Midway on 4K Blu-ray. I won't be reviewing the movie itself, I'm just going to share with you my thoughts on the video and the audio quality. Now for a few tech specs. The movie was shot in 8K, it's got a 2K DI, it's rated PG-13, runtime is 138 minutes. Aspect ratio is 239 by 1, therefore you will have those black letter box bars. Alright, before we start off with the picture quality, I want to send a shout out to all of our Patreon subscribers and to all those that follow us on social media where you can find extra content. You can find links to all that down below in the video's description. Okay, let's talk about how good this movie looks. First thing you may notice is that there is some digital grain added to this. I wouldn't say it's quite Batman v Superman levels, but it is noticeable nonetheless. So for all you that love clean 4K crispiness, this movie is not going to have it. Still, there is a very nice level of detail present. The obvious near-field close-up shots of the actors look very detailed with all the pores, blemishes, individual strands of hair rendered all very nicely. Those little rivets on the plane's exterior and the little things like the instrument panel inside the cockpit gets a nice little upgrade over the 1080p version. Edges are cleaner and tighter and the grain structure is less noisier overall. Again, there won't be Gemini Man levels of detail, but it's got a very nice look. I know they were going for that vintage 40s era feel with this movie, and I think they did a great job capturing that with that slightly soft and grainy appearance. The color palette also enhances that old world feel. I felt the colors leaned more on the muted side with softer hues like blues and orange and grays. So as for HDR, you won't see huge splashes of vivid colors. I'd say it's on the reserved side. There are clean smooth color transitions that you'll see in many of the airplane battles. Blues transition from whites and grays, so I didn't notice any banding or any weird artifacts. Whites were bright while still keeping highlight detail visible without any clipping, which you can see right here in the snow. As for black levels, I didn't notice anything detrimental there either. Shadow details were easily discernible in the darker areas without any crush or anything else. Now where HDR starts showing its muscle is going to be during the battle scenes. The spectral highlights from all the gunfire can get intensely bright. And uh, speaking of intensely bright, the explosions are some of the brightest that I've ever seen. So have those sunglasses ready. I should also mention that some of the CGI can look a little video gamey. Some of the ships can look flat and, you know, just not real looking. Well, that's because your only religion is chasing tail. Audio is in Dolby Atmos, and uh, whether you enjoy the grainy picture or just find this movie boring, you really should own this movie just for the surround sound alone. If you don't have a home theater setup, then you could probably skip it. But if you do have a system, this has got to be one of the best Atmos mixes that I've heard. There's always some ambiance during the quieter scenes. You'll hear things like wind blowing, insects outside, or if you're inside the ship, you'll hear water splashing around, or little mechanical noises. You'll get that enclosed in a small space feel. But you're probably not buying this for the ambiance or the musical score. It's going to be the aerial battles that's going to blow you away. There's tons of speaker to speaker movement above your head, below your head, and every place in between. Planes fly in a full 360 degree sound field in chapter 3 and just immerses you in all directions. What you see on screen is exactly what you'll hear on your speakers. Now I can't remember a time where I had to turn down my subwoofers because I was afraid I was going to disturb the neighbors. This movie legit had me worried. Pretty much any action scene and definitely any explosions may have you scared for your subwoofer's life. Bass response digs crazy low and will make you feel its presence through your entire body. If you've only got a single sub, then you might want to upgrade to three more. There's hard hitting bass during the battles and some infrasonics in chapter 7 when the bombs go off in the background. What can I say? This is reference quality bass. Soundstage, as you can imagine, is large and grandiose and will give this movie a big cinematic feel. Dialogue was always easy to hear without any issues hearing people talk. So for audio, I'm gonna have to go with a 10. This has got it all. Nice subtle ambiance and crazy bombastic surround. If you need a movie that'll give your home theater a serious workout, then this movie needs to be in your collection. For a video, I'm gonna go with an 8.1. I personally like the way this movie looks, but I can see how the grain might turn some folks off. It's not the sharpest or the cleanest movie, but there's still a ton of detail and there is some great HDR usage. So is this movie worth a purchase? Like I mentioned before, if you're a home theater enthusiast or a bass junkie, then this movie should already be in your collection. The Atmos mix alone makes this movie a winner. Now, whether or not you actually like the movie, I'll let you decide that for yourself. Leave a comment down below and let us know. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to give this video a like if you found it useful. And if you're not a subscriber, then tap the subscribe button. And we'll see you guys again in the next one.